guys, I'm back with another easy, yummy keto recipe that the whole family will love, not just the keto dieters in the fam. So, I don't know if any of you guys ever grew up eating the chilled veggie pizza. Um, it was a Pillsbury Crescent dough that you would unroll and spread out on a pan and bake and then cool and you would top it with like ranch and raw veggies and cheese. Yeah, I used to have that all the time growing up. And I found a recipe online where they made it keto. And it's actually pretty easy. You just bake off your favorite fathead dough recipe, and I will link mine below, but it's super simple. Just mozzarella, cream cheese, almond flour, seasonings, egg, mix it all up, bake it. And I've actually put it in on a cold pan and put it in the freezer to let it chill while I'm getting the other ingredients together. So I'll take you through that and we'll finish it up. I'm going to have the like base that's going to be the sauce and it is an entire eight ounce block of cream cheese that I softened just by letting it go in the microwave for a few seconds until it got soft but not hot. Um, a half cup of mayo, a half cup of sour cream, and then three tablespoons of this um, Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning or you can use one of the packets and you just stir that up really good until it's all mixed. I'm probably going to take a whisk to it to get out all the lumps. But um, when the pizza crust is cooled, we're gonna spread this on it and top it with some raw veggies. I'm gonna do broccoli, peppers, and some scallions, and probably tomatoes, and mushrooms too, I think. And then um, some of this, my favorite cheese lately. I have been digging this Sargento aged, 18 month aged cheddar. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do all of that in just a second and I'll show you what it, it looks is like. done. I pulled the fat head dough that was chilled out of the freezer. I smeared about half of that cream cheese, ranch, mayo, sour cream mixture I showed you guys. Using the whole thing would have been way too much. So I don't know if the recipe maybe like um, had a thinner, larger crust or whatever. Anyway, I used about half of it. Just spread a nice thin layer on it. Then I did about a half a cup of shredded cheese and then I chopped up the um, mushrooms and broccoli and scallions and tomatoes and orange bell pepper and that is it. So I'm kind of spreading them out to look prettier but you're going to pop this back in the fridge for about 30 minutes just to chill a little more and then you can slice it up and eat it. So yeah, that is the chilled keto veggie pizza. I hope you love it. I'm sure I will. Hey guys, happy Monday. I am coming at you today with another quick, easy, yummy keto recipe. Um, today's recipe is super simple, but super yummy and my favorite way ever to eat cabbage. So basically it's going to be some bacon wrapped cabbage wedges that I'm gonna wrap in foil, season with a little um, Kerrygold butter, Tony's Cajun seasoning, and throw on the grill until it gets all soft and yummy and it's so good. So here we go. Okay, so this is how I cut the cabbage. I just do it in wedges here. You can do them any size you want, but just know that the thicker you cut them, the longer you'll have to cook them. I'm doing mine on my indoor grill, but you can also just bake these in the oven too. I just like wrap them in foil and line them up in a pan. But I'll show you what it looks like too. But what I'm gonna do is put a pat of butter on it, um, which I use this, Kerrygold Pure Irish Grass-Fed Butter and then a sprinkle of this tony shasheries i probably just butchered that but it is cajun creole seasoning it's amazing we use it on everything and then i'll take a piece of bacon and wrap it around wrap it in foil and that'll be it so let's go on to the next this is what it looks like um, before i wrap up the foil so there's the wedge um i've wrapped it with bacon but i seasoned it really good with tony's i took a tablespoon of the butter and cut it in half and smeared just kind of pressed it into half on one side, half on the other, seasoned it up really good, wrapped it around with a piece of bacon, doesn't need to be perfect, and then I'm going to wrap up the foil and make a little pouch. And this is what it looks like. Um, nothing fancy, I just took all four corners, gathered it up at the top, and kind of rolled it over and pinched it. So um, I always leave the pinched part on top, that way there'll be no leakage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bust out all of these others and throw them on the grill. All eight of my cabbage wedges on the grill. This is my trusty little um, Gotham some copper titanium indoor grill. I love it, love it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let this go for probably a whole hour because I want the cabbage to be completely cooked and soft and yummy. Um, and 
So that'll probably take about an hour, but I will check on it and let you know exactly how long it takes. I'm also gonna cook up some steaks for dinner on this grill, um, but of course after the cabbage is done, so just make sure you give yourself plenty of time with this cabbage. Put it on a good hour before you're gonna eat and you'll be good to go. These beautiful ribeyes. I have just got some barbecue dry rub on them. I just try to choose one that's low in sugar. Um, most of it's gonna get cooked off anyway, so you know that's not a huge deal with my seasonings. Um, if you're a little more meticulous, of course, you'd wanna look for something with no sugar at all. Um, but yeah, while the cabbage finishes up, I'm gonna let this come to room temp and kind of absorb some of the seasonings and then I'm gonna throw it on the grill. Hey guys, the cabbage is about to come off the grill. I just checked one and it's almost there and it's almost to the hour mark, so I think it will be an exact hour. But I wanted to show you what these amazing ribeyes look like. You saw them in my last um, clip where the top was completely coated. You couldn't see the meat at all hardly. And look how much of it, I haven't done anything to it by the way, look how much of it has just soaked down into the meat. I think that's awesome. So that's exactly what we want. We want, you know, the meat, the flavor to soak down in there. Um, I always l let my meat sit out a couple minutes um, at least before because you want it to come to, you know, you don't want it to obviously sit out and get hot, but you want it to come to more of a room temperature before you throw it on the grill because it will allow for more even cooking so that you can get the temperature you want. I like my steaks to be medium rare and um, if they're still, you know, really, really cold when you throw them on there, the chances of it burning on the outside and to being, still being cold or underdone in the middle, um, the chances of that happening are higher. So let your meat sit out for a few minutes before you throw it on, season it up, let that soak in, and your meat will be awesome. That's Promise. what it looks like when it's done. That's the bacon wrapped cabbage and the ribeye. I wanted to kind of open this up and show you what it looks like. We were in a hurry to get the table set and all that in my last clip. So I wanted to show you up close. This is what the cabbage should look like when it's done. Um, it almost looks caramelized and the bacon's done and you should be able to stick a fork all the way through it. And it was amazing, you guys. It was so good. And I also wanted to show you a good keto-friendly steak sauce option. I don't always use steak sauce because I do season my meat really well. But if you're looking for a sugar-free steak sauce, this is awesome. It's G Hughes. They make all kinds of stuff. They make honey mustard, barbecue, ketchup, marinades. But this is their steak sauce. I got it off Amazon. But some stores may have it if you find it in your stores. I'm super jealous. I have to order mine. But it's really good. Um, it's kind of like a sweet, spicy, you know, typical steak sauce flavors going on. So that was really good. I dipped it in a little of that on the side. And that was dinner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Definitely try the cabbage. Hey guys, know? I'm back. I'm doing another quick, easy, yummy keto recipe for you tonight. And I'm pulling out the Instant Pot for some Instant Pot brats. That's a mouthful. Um, I've got two kinds. I've got the beer brats and the stadium brats, both by Johnsonville. I'm going to do them in the Instant Pot, um, but first I'm going to put it on the saute function. I'm going to throw a couple tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm going to do some red and white onion and some bell pepper. Saute it for a couple minutes. Sorry, that's my washer and my parrot going back and forth in the background. Um, and then I will shut the Instant Pot off, throw in the broth, throw in a little broth, and put the lid on it and pressure cook it for five minutes with the butter and the peppers still in the pot. So let's get to so it. So for your non-keto family members, you can serve this up with some buns or you can just chop it up and eat as is. Or um, I'll probably just have it like as is or alongside a little salad tonight. I am not hungry, like at all. I am sipping on my little fat burning limeade right now. Um, and I just am not hungry. So I never force myself to eat if I'm not hungry. So, um, but if I don't eat, I will just pop it in a container and I'll have lunch for tomorrow or whatever. But yeah, meal prep. Woo. Saute button right there. And then I've got um, four tablespoons of butter since I'm doing two whole packs of brats. And I'm just going to let that melt down. And then I'm going to throw this in the pot. It's um, it's probably like maybe two cups of pepper and maybe, you know, a cup and a half or two of white and red onions. So you can use whatever veggies or peppers or onions you like. But um, whenever this gets hot and melty, I'm going to throw it in there and let them cook down for a few minutes. Change of plans. I actually decided that before putting the veggies in, I'm going to put the brats in and just kind of turn them every couple of minutes and brown them. Um, and then I'll take them out. And then I will put the veggies in and cook those. Just because I want to get a nice sear on the outside of the brats before I steam them. 
and I think it will add some nice flavor um, and kind of like little brown bits of goodness to the pan. So yeah, there we go. Guys, I have pulled the brats out and they've got a nice sear on them. I just kind of like got them browned around a little on all sides. And then I removed them and I threw in the peppers and onions and kind of stirred that around and got all of those yummy brown bits off the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna let those ride out for a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna show you what I did next. So, um, after a few minutes of cooking the peppers, I just hit the cancel button on the Instant Pot so it will say off. Then I threw the brats back into the pot with the peppers and onions and I added one cup of chicken broth. You could also do like um, a teaspoon of chicken bouillon stirred into a cup of water or you could just do plain water but I like broth just for more flavor. So I added a cup of that and then I'm going to add the top to the Instant Pot and make sure that this back here is sealed. That's venting right there, so you wanna make sure it's turned all the way back and sealed. And then you're just gonna go back over here and you're gonna hit pressure cook. And we're gonna adjust it to just five minutes because they are already cooked. We are just steaming them basically. And you can keep them warm, like if you're not gonna be around and you've got some stuff to do, but you want your dinner kept hot, you can have that keep warm light on, but I will be right here, so it's fine. Um, and then you just let it go. One thing that confused me about the Instant Pot is there is no start button, um, but you just hit pressure cook and wait, and it'll say on. It's just coming to the right temperature, and it will go back to the time and start counting down from five minutes when it's ready. So now it's up, so it's off now. Um, it's not on keep warm or anything. What I did was I set my phone timer for five minutes because I'm going to do five minutes of what's called a natural release, which means that I'm not going to turn this to venting just yet. I'm going to let it release some of its pressure naturally on its own. Um, if you let the Instant Pot go long enough, it will release all of the pressure on its own. But um, if you want to just hurry things along, you can just turn that all the way um, counterclockwise to the venting and it will go psh, and it will let all of that steam out of the top. Um, some people say that doing that might take away from some of the moisture. Um, so that is why this um, recipe, I'm going to let it naturally release for, ooh, that's hot, five minutes and then turn it and just re-release um, whatever's left over. So I'll show you what it looks like inside of the pressure out of the Instant Pot. So you just let that go until it's completely done and it's quiet. And then we can open the lid safely and it will be done. I'll show you it's all done. So the peppers and onions have cooked down. I've got a slotted spoon to serve it with. Um, the brats are browned on the outside, super moist and yummy. So I will probably, when I get hungry, um, just get a couple of them, slice them up, serve them with some of the peppers and onions on top and maybe do like a little salad on the side or something. But that is instant pot brats, super easy and fast.